All right, so we're back up here by this pond project. You've seen in the past videos, you guys have to look back, you wanna see John dug that out and then he came back here about three weeks later with the cat and did some grooming and and it was still kind of wet yet, but one of these things are a pond, you know, you have to take advantage of the, what you got because if we get, you know, two, three inch rainfall, which has happened, it filled this thing up and then you're kind of done. You can't work in the basin anymore, you're just around the edges. But so you got pretty good. And then here, last several days, I've been with my bobcat and my dump trailer. Right down here is where you put most of that, that mud that was like pudding. I was able to load up. I think we had like 10 loads that all got, you know, scooped out of there and then dumped over the dike over to here. And it's still a little bit sticky yet. But then I put some into this ravine here. He did kind of groom that up for me, but then I put that in there because that's topsoil. That'll grow some, some grass and stuff good, you know. A little bit long here. And then I kind of made a little bit of a berm here. And we got somewhat of a road. It ain't nothing huge, but it's just enough so you can come through with the four-wheeler, maybe get a little firewood out of here or something with the tractor. On that side, he talked about it, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to cut a dugway there. It's really steep there. So if it's not, the conditions aren't right, you'd slide right into that pond. So that's just going to stay natural like it was. So anyway, the plan's going to be today to seed this down. Right in here, I might pull some of this dirt back again, do something different here, but I got some, some old rock I can put here to keep it from starting to wash from this ravine. And then up there, I did put a little bit more dirt right in there, like a little bit of, like a little tiny dike to hold initially the water so it doesn't start washing until it actually grows in. So hopefully we can get away with, without having to redo something here in case we get some big rains here. It's always the thing with these type of things you don't you don't know you know it's a dry year but all of a sudden it start raining i've seen it like that before we get a lot of dry time and then all of a sudden you get these big rains kind of like it's making up for itself then in here too there's a little bit of a, a ravine in here something that's probably washed out from 100 years ago already but i did put a little bit of a berm there so i don't know it could it could hold some of the original water that comes down through and Maybe we'd help save ourselves. Oh, a little bit up there. There's a little bit of a gully started there from years ago too. Kind of patched that up, rerouted the water a little bit there. And then our guy John here, he did put, he did end up putting a little bit of a high spot right here so that whatever comes out of this ravine kind of pools up here and doesn't actually wash. It's real shallow here, shallow and wide. I might have to do a little bit of bobcat work yet, put the drag together and, um, and drag this, break up some of these clumps before I seed this. So I don't know, it's looking pretty dry down in here now. I'm sure if we opened this up, it would be wet underneath, but that's how it is in this valley here. You know, there's springs in here. And then eventually we will fence it back off so the cows don't destroy the banks. But right now, I think we're just gonna get it seeded and uh, we'll look at that fence deal maybe late this fall or in the early spring. Yeah, and then on top of the dike here, it ain't very wide up here. Kind of wish it got we had made this wider, but I gotta find my overflow pipe again. It, I did find it, and then after I got done grooming things up, I ended up kind of burying it a little bit. But I didn't think it was that deep. I, mean, I should be able to find it without too much trouble. Right there, you see my pipe, and I had to add on to it a little bit, so it's it's over there. I gotta dig that back out and find that so we don't have that buried and ruined. We'll check in with you guys as I go, as I get things happening here. And it's a cloudy day and it's been extremely hot. We're in late August and if I don't get to seeded now, you know, then it don't grow in very good before winter. And like I said, even if it starts to wash a little bit on us, we have time to correct it before it gets froze up or, you know, once, I think once we get past the spring thaw and everything still stays pretty good, you kind of get out of the woods with something like this. So there we are.
looks good. We groomed it up. We set it on the high setting, the low setting. I'm gonna hook this dump trailer back up. I gotta go home. I got some some different type of stone stuff to put in a couple spots, and then we're gonna see. We got our 1006 no-till drill. I believe I got enough oats, enough grass seed. Just a touch of alfalfa we'll put in there too, just because we have it. We're headed back up. Uh, we loaded that stone, but we're gonna put that on after we seed and drag. Kind of figured that it would be better that way. Actually a pretty good day for just working outside. Way cooler, like in the 70s. I don't like that, but there's a lot of clover and grass down in it. There's a herd down there on the bottoms hanging out. A lot of grass down there.
Okay, there we have it. I got a couple pails of just the grass seed for the banks where it's way too steep for me to go down through. Sprinkle that on. There's a little breeze out here, so it actually feathered on really nice. A few places I kind of doubled up with the drill. So here everything looks pretty good. I guess someday we could extend this. That's a very expensive pipe. It's like 80 bucks for, a, I think it's 10 feet totally. It's kind of crazy how everything's gotten, so you gotta think if it's worth it, but it'll probably be a while before this thing overflows. Hopefully it's succeeded in enough that it don't wash out another hole. Okay, so we're gonna unhook this, do the dragging. Then I think I'm gonna take this home, put this away, and then bring back the that stone. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. And I did put I did put one of these old rings in here. I found something but it, it actually broke off right there, broke through. And um, I just need to find the right thing, take some time out. Pretty minor stuff. This actually held up a long time. You get a couple of years out of it, not that big a deal. Okay, we're gonna get dragging. Let you guys ride along with that. Okay, here we are back home, hooking up the dump trailer with our stone in it. We're gonna go place that. Another change in plans here. I'm gonna take a few bales of straw with me to shake out in those in those waterway areas a little bit. I was going to go up with the four-wheeler later with it, but it would probably make more sense to just take it along right away. We'll take a minor fork with to shake it out. Okay, that took a little bit because I had to climb way up in there. Then our three-pung fork to shake it out. It gets to be quite a process doing something like this if you want to do it right. I mean, there's a lot, a lot further a guy could go with stuff. As far as mulching that, we'd have any bedding pack manure, which we don't have that much right now. Typically right now we don't have that much bedding in with the manure. If I do get a little, I might take some back there as the summer wears on here further. So we're going to go on up and we'll check back in again. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to see if I can strategically get some of this rock off here without losing the whole load. I'll probably have to, I don't really have that much of it, but I want to place it along this brim here. Because there's going to be a little bit of water coming down here. I don't want this to make a hole. I'm going to put some here and I'm going to put some over there. There's a spot over there for some. Other than that, I don't think it's real critical. So.
another one. Look at them guys. Okay, that didn't work out too bad. I'm gonna have to do some hand work here. I don't have that much of this stuff, but to get this like a brim here, we'll maybe put a little straw out with it. And we got the same thing over there. Maybe we can start over there. And this can get kind of tedious messing with stuff like this, but I think it's just best if we can prevent the wash out to, before it happens and to try to fix it later. And then typically what I do when I'm out here checking cattle, I'll, after the rains, I'll be checking on this and then readjusting my stonework a little bit here. If it starts to wash, you tuck your rocks in, your stone in. Now it don't look like much, but <laughs> you gotta do what you can. And I think I might have to make some adjustments here. What I should do is fetch up a little dirt and throw it over the top of it too. You just kinda get it settled in nice that way. Maybe with a little straw. And every time we find a stone, we put it in some wash somewhere. We don't have a lot of rocks on this farm. A little bit of shale, a little bit of sandstone, but there's always a few somewhere. All right, we're gonna shut you guys off here. <laughs> you kind of get the idea. So when I get this heap kind of situated here, we'll, we'll show you what I got. Okay, there we go. I gotta take these straw bales and stick them up in here. I ain't got that much, but I think I'm just gonna make little windrows like that. We could leave the whole bales in here, but these heifers, my dry cows are just gonna come here and be ripping around on that. They might come here anyway now, but at least they won't be able to move much of it. So that's the deal. Got the drag on board. I think we're done for now. Have to come back to get the bobcat, the grapple.